Hey, what's up ladies and gents? Um, my name is Jesse, and I currently live in the, uh, beautiful <laughs> city of Osaka, Japan. Um, it's in the Kansai region, which means it's in kind of the central area of the country, or a little more south than that, I guess. Um, the reason I'm making these videos is because the majority of the videos shot in Japan by bloggers are in Tokyo. Um, and the problem with that is that Tokyo simply not is not representative of Japan. Um, a lot of people out there have been to Tokyo, and only Tokyo, and say, I love Japan. And the fact is, they don't really know Japan well. They love Tokyo. They don't love Japan. Tokyo is a special place, and the people of Tokyo are also special. Um, as the people of Kansai would say, they're, they're just different. Um, now, the people of Kansai are slightly different, too. They tend to be known as more earthy and friendly. Um, say, for example, when someone from outside of the Kansai region hears Kansai Ben, which is the native dialect of the Kansai region, it's a variation of Japanese, people will tend to think that they're very warm and welcoming and um, a lot more open. And the other problem is that the people of Tokyo have also negatively stereotyped this region for whatever reasons they may have, um, saying that Osakans are loud, noisy, concerned with money, which, <laughs> although is true in many cases, it's not in all. Um, so obviously stereotypes have their basis in fact, but in this case, Osaka is very different. And the problem is, there are only, I think, two two other bloggers on YouTube that have even showed Osaka. One of which is Kansai PJ, which I give total props to. He makes very good videos. Um, but the problem is, as far as promoting Osaka goes, he just shows what his life is like, which is great. Um, I personally want to become an English teacher abroad, so his videos are a great inspiration to me. However, the purpose of my videos is going to be to encourage more people to come and visit the Kansai region. Um, and specifically, when they're in Kansai, to visit other areas besides the huge shrines and such in the tourist traps of Kyoto and Nara. Um, I just want to show people what life is really like for most average Japanese, and I think that Kansai is the perfect example. Um, now really, as I was saying earlier, I laughed when I said that Kansai, and specifically Osaka, is beautiful. And that's because, really, Osaka is a concrete jungle. Um, or you can call it a, you know, urban wonderland. Whatever you want to call it. It's still the same. But, Osaka has a lot to offer, and so do the people. Um, specifically in Osaka, we have Universal Studios. Um, we have Dotonbori. This is the place that the Japanese actually come for their vacations. So if you really want a look at the culture behind Japan, behind the curtain of Tokyo, um, at the real Japanese, come to the place that they go for their vacations, because then you'll be able to see how the Japanese really have fun. Most Japanese don't go to Tokyo for their vacations. Um, when you come to Osaka, there's something called Kuirore, which literally means something to the degree of eating yourself silly or into ruin. And it really says a lot about the Japanese culture that this is a big thing for their culture. Eating is a big thing, and that's why they come here. We also have a lot more than what I previously mentioned, though. Um, Osaka is also strategically placed, as I was mentioning before, in the middle of Kansai region. So, to get from, say, Kyoto, or or to go to Kyoto, rather, or Nara, Wakayama, the surrounding area, um, even Kyushu, it's only no more than two hours' drive. In fact, um, to get to Kyoto specifically, it's only about 35 minutes from my house um, via the Hankyu Densha, which is the Hankyu train line. Um, and the prices are very reasonable. I think it's something around $3.50. It's great. Um, and the other interesting thing about Osaka is there are many ways to get around. Whether you want to walk, take the bus, the monorail, there's also um, two train systems, the JR and the Honkyu system. Um, JR is a little bit nicer, and it goes to different areas of the city. Honkyu is eh, not so nice. I take it every day, but 
it will get you to the outlying areas, which is where the real Japanese live, and enjoy life. So if you really want to see how the Japanese live, and you want to get a true cultural experience, visit the outskirts of cities. Don't go to the tourist traps. Don't do any of that. But anyway, as I mentioned before, um, and since I don't want to go over on this video, on my first video, I'm just going to ask all of you out there, what do you want to see here? Um, what do you want to see in Osaka? And I will go. We have the famous <laughs> America town called America Muro, which I think is kind of ridiculous, but you know, I'm willing to show you that. I always told myself that I would never ever go, but your wish is my command. Um, again, we also have Dotonbori and Namba areas where people go to eat themselves silly. We have Umeda where there is insane, insane amounts of department stores, shopping, everything imaginable. Um, not to say it's cheap, but it is remarkably cheaper than Tokyo from what I've seen. Um, where else do we have? Osaka Ko, which is the harbor area. It's very interesting. If you're interested at all in shipping or, for example, how that sushi gets to your plate, Osaka Ko is a great place to go. Um, Osaka Ko is the harbor, by the way. Um, we also have Kobe, very, very close to us. It's about, I think, the same distance away as Kyoto via Densha from my um, apartment here. But, yeah, Osaka has a lot to offer, and my wishes, or your wish is my command, rather. Sorry. Um, so, yeah, send me emails. I'll go. Uh, my first few emails, or not emails, rather, videos aren't going to be that great because I just purchased this camera. This is my first time actually turning it on. So I'm going to see how this works out. Maybe about five or six down the road, they'll start to get a little bit more high tech, a little bit nicer, maybe even add some music in and stuff. Um, but I'm going to do my best, you know, bear with me. And hopefully I can show you the real Japan, the real Osaka something outside of the tourist areas, um, and I'm really hoping that you will consider coming to Kansai on your next visit. And when I say coming to Kansai, I mean more than just going to Kyoto and walking through a few shrines and thinking that you've had a cultural experience, um, because really they are like Disneyland. It's all set up for tourists. The real cultural experiences are with the people, and the people of Kansai are very friendly. People that you've never met before will just come up to you and ask you to come and eat, or when you're in a restaurant, you can just begin talking to them in a mixture of, say, English and Japanese, like I do, and you can get very interesting stories from people. And those are the things that you remember. I mean, really, when you go on a vacation, those are the things that you remember. You're not going to remember, you know, the two seconds that you were in a shrine. You're going to remember the old man you met in some seedy bar in the middle of Umeda, <laughs> and you're going to tell your friends about it. It's just one of those things. Um, it's a true cultural experience, and it's priceless. It's something that you can't get on a tour. It's something that you can't even plan for. It's something that just happens here, and that's one of the things that I really love about being in Japan, is that you get cultural experiences simply by existing. And I'm hoping that if you come to Kansai, you'll have many of them, and hopefully you will return and tell others, because Kansai is well worth the visit um, on your next trip to Tokyo or Japan. Consider it. It's well worth your time. Um, this is Jesse, signing out. Until next time, thanks for watching, guys.